Richard James will present to you factorization tutorial 3. I was hoping that we would not see a difference of two squares for a long time. But it seems like we cannot avoid it in these tutorials. We expect that at least one would be in tutorial 3, but having it as the first one makes these tutorials a bit too monotonous. I think we have quite a few difference of two squares from tutorial 1 all the way and we are having them in tutorial 3. I remember a single tutorial with at least 6 of them and let us see how many we have here. This is our first one. 1, 2, let's go again. 1, 2, 3, that's the same one. This will be factorized to a difference of 2 squares, so 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have quite a few in these tutorials. Well, since we have all of 7, I imagine then it would not be such a strange thing to see to see that the first one is a difference of two squares. So let us go straight ahead. Usually when we are factorizing a difference of two squares, which is of course a quadratic expression in its own right, we do not have to go through the entire process, but make use of the fact that it is a difference of two squares and factorize by taking the square root of the squares, those square roots will be placed in brackets two pairs of brackets as a matter of fact and we'll have them separated by a positive and a negative sign in those pairs of brackets a positive in one and a negative in the other so we have the square root of 4g squared is equal to 2g we'll make use of 2g we have the square root of f squared is equal to f. We also make use of f. There we have them in the two pairs of brackets and we will use a negative sign and a positive sign to separate them in those brackets. And that's all there is to it. Now we have an expression with four terms and when we encounter such expressions in the examination we are usually expected to factorize them by grouping and we will go ahead and attempt to factorize this by grouping usually when we have four terms that is what we are expected to do especially that we do not have a common factor throughout the four terms and we can see that we do not have a common factor all the way through right here so we have tm 3t negative 3t plus 2pm minus 6p and if we take a good look at it we will realize that we do not have a common factor for all those four terms and that's not a surprise because we know that when we encounter such expressions we are required to factorize by grouping so we will factorize the groups groups of two taking those two at a time and take the common factor of the first one the first pair that is first so we'll take a look at tm minus 3t this will be our first group and we will factorize by a common factor of t and if we take a common factor of t we will also divide each term by the common factor of t we take a look at the other two terms and we search for the highest common factor we see that 2 is a common factor here 
and also P is present in both so we will use 2P as our highest common factor and as usual we will divide each one by the highest common factor of 2P here we are at this first step we are making this step as soon as we are through dividing each term by its common factor then we will be at this step right there so we have TM divided by T the T's will cancel and we have 3T divided by T the T's will cancel do not forget this negative sign that we have right here so it is actually as we have here negative 3t divided by t and we have it written here also so tm divided by t is equal to m negative 3t divided by t the t's will cancel we are left with a negative 3 so the t's are gone and we have m and the t's are gone and we will have 3 but a negative 3 for the other pair or the other group we have 2p will cancel with 2p and we will have m 2pm divided by 2p the 2p's will cancel we have m left also 6p divided by 2p the p's will cancel and 2 into 6 is 3 do not forget this negative sign a negative 3 so we have those cancelling and we have just the M remaining and when the other two cancel we will have the P's are gone and the 2 into 6 is 3 accompanied by this negative sign a negative 3 finally we have another common factor of M minus 3 there it is M minus 3 and we will divide by the common factor of M minus 3 notice that we are at this stage here we have it and we are about to move on to this one but we are throwing in the intermediate step notice that we took two steps in solving this problem you should get at most two marks for this problem in the examination so all of these long and lengthy tedious and uh, theoretically sophisticated intermediate steps are not necessary two marks the most that you will get for one of these problems in the examination therefore two steps should not be shorthand or considered to be shorthand so we have our common factor of m minus 3 we divide by the common factor of m minus 3 see we have taken our common factor of m minus 3 already so divide by m minus 3 that is what we do all the time take a common factor and divide by the common factor usually the highest common factor so what will happen those will cancel t remains and again those will cancel 2p a positive 2p remains so that is how we arrive at our final step our final answer this expression requires us to simply make use of the highest common factor on this occasion the highest common factor is 4h as we can see the largest number that can go into 8 and 4 without leaving a remainder is 4 and there is no doubt that we have H occurring here in this second term and we have H square which tells us that we have an occurrence of H in the first term so 4H is our common factor our highest common factor and we will divide each term by the highest common factor so we have 8h squared divided by 4h 
and that is 2h then we will have negative 4h divided by 4h and we know that any number divided by itself is equal to 1 but do not forget that we have this negative sign right there so we have 2h minus 1 so 8h squared divided by 4h which is a common factor we always divide by the highest common factor and we have 4 into 8 is 2 h into a squared is h so 2h then we have 4h to be divided by 4h any number or expression divided by itself is equal to 1 and we have this notable negative sign right there so a negative 1 no need to be distracted into imagining that the expression could have been a difference of two squares by 8 squared in the first term and 4 in the second term so although we have 8 squared here and we have 4 here that alone does not cause the expression to be a difference of two squares although the negative sign has the power to add more logic to the reasoning in the first term it is not a square number and h in the second term is not squared so although in the construction of a difference of two squares the separating sign is negative and we have an h square here and we have a 4 here that does not make it a difference of two squares because 8 is not a square number and h is not square right here I am always emphasizing or as some mathematics campers may see or may think that I am overdoing things a little bit but sometimes we have a simple expression like this which is not a difference of two squares and the form of the answers that students the form of the answer that students suggest tells me that they are thinking that the expression is a difference of two squares when it is not therefore I don't think that I am going overboard by always making mention of the difference of two squares when we have something else to factorize especially that students generally make mistake and factorize expressions and factorize expressions that are not difference of two squares in a manner that they would factorize a difference of two squares if there was any doubt that the problem before this one represented a difference of two squares then this one dispels all doubt so this one is definitely a difference of two squares so we will factorize this one as such we have a difference of two squares we factorize it as if it is a difference of two squares because it is how do we know because our first term 4x squared is a perfect square and 1 is also a perfect square and they are separated by a negative sign that makes the difference or causes it or causes the expression to be a difference so for a difference of two squares you must have a negative sign and you must have two squares proceed by finding the square root of the squares they will be enclosed in brackets and be separated by a negative sign in one case and a positive sign in the other we have seen this a hundred thousand times since we have started the tutorials and no doubt we have a few more in this one so take the square root of the squares the square root of 4x squared is 2x because the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of x squared is x no doubt the square root of 1 is 1 so we have 2x and a 1 2x and a 1 and what do we expect them to be separated by different signs a negative sign in one case and a positive sign in the other I am hoping that on this occasion 
no one had any difficulty finding the square root of 1. The difficulty that some students have with it is that they say that 1 squared is equal to 2. They therefore get lost when finding the square root of 1. Right, so some students say 1 squared is 2. Therefore, if they are about to find the square root of 1, they cannot really find the square root of 1 quite easily because the square root of 1 is actually 1, but they say that 1 squared is equal to 2. Therefore, they have some discrepancy and some kind of paradox or ambiguity in their minds. But it is for us to understand that the square of 1 is not 2. When we square 1, we get 1. 1 squared multiply 2 occurrences of 1 together. 1 multiplied by 1 is equal to 1, not 2. Here we go again. We have seen this situation before. If we get caught in two minds, always take the common factor first. Although the expression is a difference of two squares, there is a common factor of four. So, sometimes we are about to solve a problem. We see a difference of two squares. Obviously, it is a difference of two squares to us. Also, we have a common factor of four here. So, what do we do? Do we factorize difference of two squares? Or do we take a common factor? The answer is, as long as a common factor exists, take the common factor first because that is the most basic rule of factorization. So we will go ahead and take the common factor of 4. And uh, I don't imagine that is going to be very difficult to see that if we take a common factor of 4 all that will be left is p squared and a q squared with a negative sign separating them so 4p squared divided by 4 is p squared and 4q squared divided by 4 the 4's will cancel and we have only the q squared so p squared minus q squared now we have a difference of two squares in there and we will go straight ahead and factorize the difference of two squares in our usual fashion by taking the square roots of the squares. Square root of p squared is p. Square root of q squared is q. Saying that the square root and the square operation are inverses of each other. They will therefore have a cancelling effect on each other. So the square root of a square, those will take care of each other and all we have left is p and the same is true right there. Need to separate them by a positive sign in one pair of brackets and a negative sign in the other. So insert those positive and negative signs. When there are two methods of factorization that we may use, always take the common factor first. In addition to our requirements of factorization, there is a there is another requirement of the problem and we are solving the problem here but in our solution we have a statement of it so that the mathematics campers will understand the reason for us taking that particular approach the statement of the problem says 4p squared minus 4q squared is equal to 2r. So where we see 4p squared minus 4q squared, that is exactly 2r. Also, p plus q is r. So where we see p plus q, we know that that is equal to r. We are then required to show that p minus q is equal to a half. 
we were first required to factorize the expression that we did on the previous that we did on the previous slide so we factorize the expression on the previous slide and we have the factorized expression right here we were required to factorize the expression so let us make use of the factorized form which is what we have right there and it is said that 4p squared minus 4q squared is equal to 2r so put 2r so use 2r in the place of 4p squared minus 4q squared because they are equal and we are attempting to show that p minus q is equal to a half therefore we need to make some adjustment to our original factorized expression what else do we know the 4 will go back as it is and p plus q is equal to r so where we see p plus q we replace that with r so use r to replace p plus q use r in the place of p plus q what else do we know that is our proposed subject p minus q according to the statement of the problem show that p minus q is equal to a half so that will go back we will not eliminate p minus q or replace it with anything because in the end we need to identify our p minus q as being equal to r so we will maintain our p minus q and we have that in the expression also what do we do we will eliminate 4r in order to have p minus q all by itself that will cause it to be the subject the proposed subject is p minus q and it is accompanied by 4r on that right hand side by multiplication so on the right hand side we have p minus q accompanied by 4r by multiplication we will eliminate this 4r by division but we need to do the same on the other side so let us do that there we have it so divide by 4r on this side and divide by 4r on the other side so the proposed subject is p minus q it is accompanied by 4r by multiplication on the right hand side we will therefore eliminate 4r by division and do the same on the left hand side in order to keep the equation balanced so notice that what we have right here we have transferred to the other slide in order to do our simplification or just to continue the process so on that right hand side 4r is eliminated 4r is eliminated from the right hand side and what do we know 2r with 4r we are reducing the expression by a common factor of r the r's are gone so on the left hand side the r's cancel each other as we have right there and we will continue to reduce the fraction by a common factor of 2 so reduce the fraction by a common factor of 2 and see what happens 2 into 2 is 1 and 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2 2 divided by 2 is 1 4 divided by 2 is 2 there we have it so all that we have on that left hand side is 1 over 2 and all that we have on the right hand side is p minus q so a half is equal to p minus q and it is not a good thing to have the subject or proposed subject written on the right hand side so we will rewrite the expression by placing the proposed subject on the left hand side p 
turn it around and that is much better the statement of the problem required that we show that p minus q is equal to a half and that is what we have done right here the CXCC sec examiners like to include a lot of squares and other powers in problems that require that we simply make use of the highest common factor from what we have gone through so far in these tutorials no one should imagine that this problem requires anything else but to find a highest common factor the highest common factor is 5xy and I think that we have seen that in tutorial 2b so we are aware of how we arrive at that highest common factor no doubt the highest common factor of 15 and 20 is 5 and for x squared and x is x for y and y squared is y 5xy and we will divide 5 into 15 is 3 x into x squared is x and the y's will cancel 3x then 5 into negative 20 negative 4 the x's will cancel y into y squared is y negative 4x negative 4y so there we have it 15x squared y divided by 5xy is equal to 3x and the 20xy squared divided by 5xy is equal to a negative 4y so we have 3x minus 4y do not forget the negative sign right there and we are no doubt placing it under the microscope taking a common factor of 5xy and after taking a common factor of 5xy what do we do we divide each term by the highest common factor we are taking a closer look at it so we say what well we are just preparing to write the answer down we maintain our highest common factor right there and we say what 5 into 15 is 3 and we are stating it there and we are saying x squared divided by x to the power of 1 because because that's what x is x to the power of 1 so x squared divided by x to the power of 1 or x squared divided by x is equal to x and the y's will cancel and we will not say anything about the y's so we go on to 5 into 20 is 4 and the x is cancelled so we say nothing about that and y divide y squared y squared divided by y is equal to y like that the expression that we have right there is not a difference of two squares at least not yet surely 3 is not a perfect square therefore this expression cannot therefore this expression cannot be a difference of two squares because this is not a perfect square so surely 3 is not a perfect square because 3 is not a perfect square then the expression cannot be a difference of two squares so we do not need to check this one although 12 is not a perfect square either so the expression is not a so the expression is not a difference of two squares so surely 3 is not a perfect square so we do not have a difference of two squares because we have identified that one of them is not a square so we cannot have a difference of two squares if we have two terms and one of them is already not a square so we do not have two squares so we cannot have 
a difference of two squares. So three is not a perfect square, so we do not have to look at the next term, except that we are seeking for a common factor. A common factor exists, and it is equal to three. So after discovering that this is not a perfect square, we know that the expression is not a difference of two squares, so we do not have to check if the other one is a square. All we need to do if we are checking it is check it in order to find the factor that is common between the two because that's the only way that we should be able to factorize the expression at least for now so we take a common factor of 3 3 into 3 is 1 and 3 into 12 b squared is 4 b squared as we have it right there 3 divided by 3 is 1 12 b squared divided by 3 is 4 b squared so 1 minus 4b squared and no doubt we have two squares enclosed in those brackets therefore we may consider the expression to be a difference of two squares but it could not have been a difference of two squares if we did not have a negative sign here and we do so we are sure that now we have a difference of two squares Factorize the difference of two squares by taking the square roots of the square. As usual, square root of the first square, square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4b squared is 2b. And we throw those into the pairs of brackets. And in the end, we will cause them to be separated by a positive sign in one case and a negative sign in the other. The statement of the problem is usually factorized completely. If there is another step that remains, full marks may not be obtained if the step is not carried out also. So, although we factorize first taking a common factor, we still have other factors present in our expression. Therefore, we need to continue by making use of those factors also the statement of the problem is factorize completely if it is not completely factorized then we would have not followed the instruction therefore we need to follow the instruction by factorize it all the way through all the way to the end where we cannot factorize anymore and this one is one of my favorites because the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1 and that is a trinomial we usually just write the answer down and this one is made very simple by the fact that the product of a and c is 2 and we know that for integers multiplying there's only one way that we can get 2 2 multiplied by 1 or some will say there's another way 1 multiplied by 2 but I consider it to be one way because just 1 times 2 there is a trinomial in which a which is the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1 the coefficient of x squared is 1 that is the number that we imagine is accompanying the x squared right at the front here and we know that a number or an expression that is not accompanied or maybe a term that is not accompanied by any coefficient the coefficient is assumed to be 1 so the coefficient of x squared is 1 the product AC is therefore A which is the coefficient of x squared is 1 and C is 2 so 1 multiplied by 2 is equal to 2 the middle coefficient which is B is 3 all of the terms are positive we therefore have an addition problem so there is no negative sign coming into play at all so we can just forget about subtraction so the middle coefficient b is 3 all of the terms are positive 
we therefore have an addition problem. The ultimate question is therefore, what two numbers have a product of two and a sum of three? As long as we are talking about integers, we have one choice, a one and a two. So what two numbers have a product of two and a sum of three? Since there is only one integer combination that will give a product of two, and that is one multiplied by two, we know that the two numbers are one and two immediately. So we know the two numbers immediately, that they are one and two. And we can forget about trying to decipher how we get the middle coefficient because 1, 2 is equal to 3 so we know that 1 and 2 are correct so 2 times 1 is equal to 2 and 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 that's all also because the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1 we do not have to go through the lengthy process in order to factorize that trinomial the two numbers the two numbers will accompany the x's in those linear factors so we have our factors written down right there at least the first part so we have x in one bracket and x in the other because when we are factorizing a trinomial and the coefficient of x squared is equal to one we may go straight ahead and write down the factors in one step as long as we are capable of identifying the two numbers that will give a product that is equal to AC and whose sum is equal to B we just write them in so the two numbers will accompany the X's in those linear factors and we have the X's already we have a 2 and we have a 1 so we have a 2 and we have a 1 that's it whenever there is a factorization problem with a portion of it already factorized do not proceed to expand the brackets giving factors in the original statement is the examiner's method of hinting to us giving factors in the original statement is the examiner's method of hinting us as to what other factors might look like therefore we will return the factorized portion and for the other portion we will take a common factor of a as we can see that there is a common factor of a here so we will keep this now what do we expect when we see the factors given to us already or a portion of the expression given to us in factors already what do we expect we expect that if we factorize the portion the other one the one that is not yet factorized we will see there either a factor of x minus 2 or a factor of x plus 3 and of course it pretty much gives itself away because we have the 3 here and the 3 there so we expect and some people and mathematics campers may not say that we expect that the other factor will be x plus 3 they say that we know right away that the other factor is x plus 3 for one if we are factorizing we have to have common factors and only the 3 will give us a common factor with what we have right here x plus 3 will be that common factor or we may go ahead and factorize the expression in our minds so we have no doubt that well I'm not going to say it I will always say that we expect because until we get there then we cannot be sure unless we have done it in our minds and this one is not difficult
to accomplish in our minds as the songwriter says magic is not magic until it is magic so I'm not calling I'm just saying that I expect so the expression returns as it is and the other one we take a common factor of a and we say a x divided by a is x and 3a divided by a is 3 so the a's will go from here x and the a's will go from there 3 so x plus 3 and what do we know that we have further factorization possible because we have a common factor of x plus 3 finally the common factor is x plus 3 and let us see what we do take the highest common factor of x plus 3 and we will divide each term by the highest common factor and what is that highest common factor x plus 3 divide the expression by x plus 3 what do we see remember that when we are factorizing we always carry the common factor with us some students do not do that they forget about the highest common factor and they write down the other one but do not forget that the highest common factor is necessary in maintaining the value or the composition of the original expression so we have x plus 3 right here and when these are gone we have x minus 2 and on the other hand we have those are gone and we have a and that's all there is to it we have that completely factorized common factor again apart from the fact that the two terms are far from being squares except for the presence of y squared and the present of y squared here does not make it a perfect square because it is accompanied by 2 which is not a square number so apart from the fact that the two numbers are far from being squares except for the presence of y squared that disqualifies our next expression from being a difference of two squares the positive sign is usually the greatest indication that we do not have a difference of two squares we will therefore proceed to take a common factor the common factor y is quite obvious so the only thing about this expression that looks like a square is the y squared and we know that this term is not a perfect square because 2 is not a square also we do not even need to analyze 3y we are sure that it is not a perfect square and it cannot the expression in totality cannot be a difference of two squares because this is not a difference we have a plus sign here that tells us that we do not have a difference of two squares cannot be a difference with a positive sign so take a common factor of y and two occurrences of y right here because we have y squared one will be gone and one will be left so we have 2y and of course the y's will cancel here we have 3 so we have 2y squared divided by y is 2y and 3y divided by y is equal to 3 no matter what an expression that has two terms cannot be a difference of two squares if the sign that separates them is a positive sign a negative sign is required for an expression to be a difference so we do not and we cannot have a difference of two squares even if we have two squares and they are separated by a positive sign that is still not a difference of two squares because for a difference of two squares we need their difference 
and the difference will be indicated by a negative negative sign now here is your difference of two squares we do not imagine that in these tutorials that one can be very far away so the difference of two squares are usually very near because we have so many of them now here is your difference of two squares we will write down the two factors by considering the square root of the squares square root of 81 is 9 square root of m squared is m so proceed by finding the square root of the squares they will be enclosed in brackets and be separated by a negative sign in one case and a positive sign in the other square root of 81 is equal to 9 square root of m squared is equal to m and we need to have them like that and then we separate them with our signs a negative in one case and a positive in the other for this trinomial for this trinomial the product of a and the constant value c is a is equal to 2 and c is equal to negative 15 means that we multiply 2 by negative 15 and that gives us negative 30 a negative product indicates that the two middle coefficients will have different signs the value of b is negative this tells us that the larger one is negative so we are about to consider the possibilities and what did we say the product is negative they must have different signs the sum is negative when we add them the result is negative the larger one is negative look at the possibilities those are your possibilities and what do we know remember that 30 times 1 is 30 10 times 3 is 30 15 times 2 is 30 and 6 5 is 30 but the combination that will give a negative 1 is this one we have no difficulty identifying it right there we know that a coefficient of 1 is not usually written or we may say that if a term is not accompanied by a coefficient then the value of the coefficient is equal to 1 by default the negative sign preceding the term without any number implies that the coefficient is negative 1 so if we have this not accompanied by any number we are sure that the coefficient is 1 but including this negative sign we know that the coefficient is negative 1 and we have it right there so negative 6 and positive 5 will be the components the coefficient of the two component middle terms and we have them right there now that we have the two component coefficients we have them as negative 6 and 5 let us proceed to factorize so we take the first two terms and they have a common factor of 2x so take 2x and not including the cumbersome intermediate step we say 2x squared divided by 2x is x and negative 6x divided by 2x is negative 3 there and the next common factor is easy is a 5 and the division is even easier because we say 5 will cancel 5 and we have x and 5 into 15 is 3 and no doubt that negative sign right there and negative 3 5x divided by 5 is equal to x the 5's will cancel 
and negative 15 divided by 5 5 into 15 is 3 and don't forget that negative sign right there and we will finish our factorization by taking a common factor of x minus 3 can I take a common factor of something that's not a common factor so any common factor we will take that common factor x minus 3 and after taking that highest common factor what do we do divide each term by the highest common factor that's what we always do so the x minus 3 will cancel with the x minus 3 and we have 2x the x minus 3 will cancel with the x minus 3 and we have 5 a positive 5 so 2x plus 5 after we divide each term by x minus 3 the other factor will be 2x plus 5 like so next make light work of the factorization of this difference of two squares because by now we know we need to find the square root of the squares proceed by finding the square root of the squares and they will be enclosed in brackets and separated by a negative sign in one case and a positive sign in the other square root of 4x squared is 2x square root of 9 is 3 right so all we do is that and then separate them by a negative and a positive sign no problem with that one and surely we should not have any problem or difficulty with any subsequent difference of two squares by now we should reach at this stage of our lives by now we should reach at the stage of our lives that we should be able to look at a factorization problem especially one that has two terms and immediately know what to do with it not even distracted by the not even distracted by the y squared nor the negative sign no one no one should be thinking about a difference of two squares again the common factor of y is glaring so we should not be distracted by a square here and a negative sign here we know that it is not a difference of two squares this is not a square and we know that we need to take the common factor and we go straight ahead y into y squared is y y into negative 3y the y's cancel a negative 3 y minus 3 y squared divided by y is equal to y and negative 3y divided by y is equal to a negative 3 and that's all there is to it if you want to be great at anything you have to cause the easy aspect of that thing to appear easy too often people are able to decipher the more difficult stuff but they are defeated by the very simple one so don't allow that to happen to you anything that is simple cause it to look simple and just move merrily along don't keep trying to impress yourself because you cannot impress me and you cannot impress the examiner that you are powerful in mathematics by solving a problem that requires you to take a common factor so cause that simple problem to look exactly as it is it is very simple now we have now we have either of two situations right here either you will be bored by the monotony of encountering so many problems in the form of a difference of two squares or they are so familiar that they will be among your favorites I will go with the latter especially that by now you should find them to be simple and that in the examination you will be able to use them to score easy marks so either you'll be bored by the difference of two squares or you'll be very happy that you can factorize them and get your marks and I think that you should be very happy that you can factorize them and get your marks
So, be very happy that you are able to factorize them and get very easy marks, rather than to say that we are bored by them because we have so many of them in these tutorials. And what do we do? Take the square roots of the squares. Proceed by finding the square root of the squares. They will be enclosed in brackets and be separated by a negative sign in one case and a positive sign in the other. Right. And that's all there is to it. No doubt, the square root of 9x squared is equal to 3x. 3, 3 is 9 and x times x is x squared. And of course, no need to go through any analysis for the square root of 1 is equal to 1. In this particular case, the product of A and the constant value C is 8 times negative 1. 8 is for A and negative 1 is for C. And when we multiply them, we get negative 8. A negative product indicates that the two middle coefficients will have different signs. The value of B is negative. This tells us that the larger one is negative and we will consider and we will consider the possibilities. So negative product numbers will have different signs. Negative sum, the larger one is negative. All we have is eight one and four two. All we have is 8, 1, and 4, 2. And it turns out negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And that one is correct. Of the pairs of numbers that give a product of negative 8, the pair that gives a sum of negative 2 is negative 4 plus 2. They will be the two, they will be the two coefficients of the component middle terms. Because what? Negative 8 multiplied by 1 is is equal to negative 8 and we need that but negative 8 plus 1 is equal to negative 7 and this is not negative 7 and therefore is not the result that we are looking for but negative 4 times 2 is equal to negative 8 and negative 4 plus 2 is equal to negative 2 and that satisfies our requirement so our two component middle coefficients will be a negative 4 and a positive 2. We will now go straight ahead and factorize by grouping. And for the first two, we will use a common factor of 4x. So the first two terms of a common factor of 4x. And what will we do after that? 4x into 8x squared is 2x and negative 4x divided by 4x is a negative 1 because 4x divided by 4x anything divided by itself is 1 and don't forget that negative sign. The other part is easy because we are taking the only possible common factor that we have is 1 and after so doing 1 into anything is that same thing. So the 2x minus 1 will return as it is. Any number or expression divided by 1 is equal to that same number. The terms will return unaltered. Then we will have what? A common factor of 2x minus 1 as we can see right here. So we will finish our factorization by taking a common factor of 2x minus 1. Take that common factor of 2x minus 1 and what will be left? 2x minus 1 will cancel 2x minus 1. And we will have 4x remaining and then 2x minus 1 into 2x minus 1 and we have 1 remaining like that 
so 4x plus 1 will be our other factor by dividing each term by 2x minus 1 the other factor will be 4x plus 1 there we have it